Oh my gosh, it is so hot. But, hello everyone, we're in the park today because today is May 9th. Today is the closing day of Poseidon's Fury, and I wanted to come out and visit the attraction before it closed one last time, talk about the Lost Continent, just offer my thoughts, my opinions, and show you guys Poseidon's Fury because this attraction is closing today. I've been to a few different ride openings, but I've never actually been to a ride closing, so this is going to be a really interesting uh, experience. I'm going to document as much as I can. I'm going to try to see if they have the shirts, uh, because those shirts have been really elusive over the past few weeks. So let's just head on in and let's get started on the final day of Poseidon's Fury. So it is now like 10 a.m. or so, it's like 10, 17. Sense Fury just opened and it's sitting at a 40 minute wait right now. So, you know, I'm sure this will be pretty busy. I hope it doesn't go down very often. I mean, it's probably going to just because that's what this ride tends to do, but 40 minutes looks like what we're gonna be waiting for Science Fury. All right, straight to the Lost Con, and I'm not playing around. Usually I stop to look at the Lagoon. It's my favorite thing to look at in Islands of Adventure, but we're just going, we gotta go straight to Science Fury and get in before it breaks down. Now we all see that this is the hand of Poseidon and the foot of Poseidon is over there or all the way over there but this is actually the head of Poseidon which is so cool and really adds to that just incredible detail that comes with this attraction and this land in general. Is this the best facade ever built at Universal? Probably. It's so dynamic like once you walk up there like you can't really tell like the scale is there. It's obviously big but you don't really know until you walk up to that facade and really get a, a, a feel for how big it is. Like, come on. Like, just the buildup. Like, there's like so much buildup and anticipation here. It's done really well. Like, it's such a foreboding sort of entrance. And I think here you really get that scale. This is huge. And just like the carvings and everything on the walls. It's insane. Think there's a mistake? We're part of a tour. We don't know anything about the Trident or Poseidon. We need something to pry the doors open. Come on, come on. Yeah. Who calls on the gods? God in the temple. Who calls upon you? I don't know if we do. Do you hold Poseidon's Trident in your hand? What is your request of me? This is Poseidon's. Trident. What is your wish? I shall not ask again. You're serious? Yes, we would like to get out of here, please. Alas, it is beyond my power to grant you passage back to your world. The Dark One has sealed the doors to this chamber with a locking spell impervious to magic.
I will destroy you. I will destroy you. great show. The energy is great on that final day. Everybody's excited. Everybody's happy about Poseidon's Fury. But yeah, it's just an interesting attraction that's gone through so many different changes. I mean, it had that original version with Zeus versus Poseidon back in like the early 2000s, late 1990s. But what we have right now is really fun. It's a really cool experience and definitely great for the Lost Continent. We're not sure what's going to happen with this once it's done. You know, the fate is kind of up in the air. It's not like they're directing any sort of clues as to what's going to happen with Poseidon's Fury once it's over. But regardless, it's a really fun time. And come on, look at this facade. I've, I've, I've gushed about the facade all video, but this is a fantastic facade. Of course, like when a ride closes, the hype is high, right? Everybody's excited. Everybody wants to do it a bunch of times, even if they never would have paid any mind to it normally. But I, I, I do regret not doing this attraction more uh, more often because it's a great walkthrough stunt show attraction. It's really fun. Some great great like audience participation and live uh team member interaction it's awesome taylor is great as always and yeah i think i want to move further in the lost continent talk a little bit more about that and, and further down i'm also making it a point to say that for the final tour so for the final i guess showing of poseidon's fury they're actually requiring wristbands which is really smart it prevents kind of the overcrowding and the mania surrounding that final showing i really love the pool of narcissus here this is the reflection of narcissus up here which is pretty incredible i'm on the bridge it's kind of hard to see bridge back behind Mythos and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Lost Continent's history and the importance of the in the scale of the park and of Islands of Adventure. So originally Universal wanted to open a second park here right second park outside of Universal Studios Florida they wanted to call it Cartoon World so it was basically themed around obviously cartoons but instead of like Marvel we would have DC instead of like the Jurassic Park area we would actually have a Looney Tunes themed area so a lot of WB properties Universal sort of pivoted they wanted to incorporate Jurassic Park into this park as they were already working on a ride and uh, the movie had just come out at that point so it was really really successful so in accordance with that they wanted to incorporate a land based on sort of myths and legends and uh, sort of the idea for the Lost Continent was born at that point. So this is a key piece of what makes Islands of Adventure Islands of Adventure. So I feel like that's why this is land is so important. Um, I'm not sure whether it's going to go away. I don't think it's going to go away like soon. But while we're here, might as well appreciate some of the facade work. Because there's a lot of great facade work and uh, like building work done in the Lost Continent that really adds to that overall theme. So I want to show you some of it. So like I said, we are behind Mythos. And there's a little bit of Poseidon's Fury right there. The trident sort of peeking out behind the rocks. Really cool look. Um, but this is the backside of Mythos. Not the backside of water. That's the other park. Backside of Mythos. And you can see this guy holding up the building. He's doing a real good job there. Moving away from Mythos, we're going into the Sinbad Bazaar section. This is the farthest section away from Poseidon's Fury. And this is part of the reason I don't think it's going away anytime soon, because the Sinbad show has been shut down for years, and this is still standing here. It's mostly just food and shops now. Yeah, so back here used to house a couple attractions. Mostly the Mystic Fountain here, who is the real star of Lost Continent. Of course, we all love him. But the Sinbad Show, which sat just behind those walls, they're all roped off now. But that theater's pretty much untouched from what I've seen. Um, and the Owl Hallows Eve store, which was relatively recent opening. Um, but it's all pretty much just shops and dining here. So, you know, it's quite a big area if they're going to repurpose it. But I will be sad to see this guy go. What a legend. Now I wanted to take this last little bit of the video and talk about the importance of this closure and sort of the legacy that Poseidon's Fury has left. Because there was stuff that I didn't really talk about in the vlog portion of the video that I still wanted to touch on as this is probably the last time I'm going to be talking about Poseidon's Fury for a while. Now there was a lot of hype surrounding this closure, more hype than I've seen for a lot of other closures, more than Kid Zone, more than Shrek 4D. Really the only one I think that matches this same level of hype and excitement and also sadness is the great movie ride 
that closed in Hollywood Studios about five or six years ago. And I was kind of looking at the similarities between attractions because these two rides are completely different. But they both are the same in that they are kind of the anchors for the original storytelling coming from each park's sort of opening day, opening vision. And the Lost Continent, as I mentioned before, is so integral with the story of Islands of Adventure. And as we've seen the Lost Continent shrink over the years with the addition of the Wizarding World, and now with any rumored expansions that might be coming like Zelda, Lord of the Rings, or what have you, we see that original vision for the park sort of stripped away. A fellow theme park creator, Storybook Amusement, talked about this in his video about Poseidon's Free, so I definitely want to uh, link that and plug that because that's a great video, and he's much more involved in the story of Poseidon's Fury than I am. But he basically explains that Poseidon's Fury connects to the vision of Islands of Adventure by combining discovery, adventure, and new technology. And I 100% agree with that, and I see that when looking through Poseidon's Fury. You have a lot of facets of that attraction that are signature to Universal, like the incorporation of live actors, which is something they've really been getting back into recently, as well as the combinations of sets and screens. I know Universal gets a bad rap for screens, but this attraction does it really well and sort of paves the way along with others like Spider-Man. But beyond that, there's just a feeling that comes with Poseidon's Fury that comes to the Lost Cone and the feels signature to Islands of Adventure. While there are many Universal Studios parks out there, there is only one Islands of Adventure. And losing such an important piece of that, an important piece of that story, really is going to fundamentally change how the park operates in the years to come. You know, we've seen expansions come to Islands of Adventure with Harry Potter, with the Velocicoaster, with the Kong, but for the most part, Islands of Adventure has stayed pretty close to what it was when it opened back in 1999. Saying goodbye to an attraction isn't easy, especially when you've made such important memories with that attraction over the years. And when it's an attraction like Poseidon's Fury that has involved so many different people in keeping it alive for as long as it has been. So, for once and for all, it is officially done. The temple is sealed, the peace is restored, Poseidon's Fury is now closed, and I hope you enjoyed this last little walkthrough. If you enjoyed this video, enjoy videos like this about Universal, Universal Park History, vlogs, updates, things like that, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, I really, really would appreciate it. Let me know if you ever went on Poseidon's Fury, or if you missed your chance, unfortunately. I personally want to hear all about your Poseidon's Fury stories. The adventure lives on, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.